am Mark and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Well, here's what's going on today. We're going to talk about Prince George. There's been, I saw something in a, in a uh, blip on my computer that said, what happens if Prince George doesn't um, accept his role in the monarchy? What if he doesn't want to be king? What's going to happen then? I didn't read the article, just saw the headline. I thought, well, that's interesting. Let's fill up a Wednesday with that one. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, you know, please like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. So that's what we'll talk about today. We'll see what would happen if Prince George, when his time comes, he decides he doesn't want to be, um, you know, king for whatever reason. Things may have changed uh, as far as the feeling for the monarchy at that point. Um, let's face it, if he didn't want to uh, be uh, the monarch, um, he would probably still be very uh, wealthy and be able to live an interesting uh, life uh, anyway. Um, what would be the things that would cause Prince George not to want to be the king? So we'll talk about those things, ask a few questions, and uh, see if the next in line would step up and then be the ruler of uh, Great Britain. So I hope you like the video. Uh, before we do any of that, though, let's have just a moment, because we're going to need it for this one, of uh, meditation. So, Prince George turns it down. It's happened more than once in, uh, in British history, and um, most recent, of course, being um, George the, is it George the Fourth's brother? Um, so, which would be uh, Queen Elizabeth's uh, father. And um, so, we'll see uh, just what the cars uh, say about that. So, what if George says no? What if Prince George his time comes along. He says, nah, I'm not going to do that. No, this doesn't seem right. My cards are not, um, yeah, they are right. They are right. Okay. I thought they were upside down. No, everything's fine. So Prince George turns down the monarchy. So let's do some warm up cards. Like I often like to do just three to get us in the uh, zone for that happening. Okay, so three cards just to see what the atmosphere might be, might be like when George's turn comes around. Okay, first card is uh, the Hermit card. Well, this is very appropriate for that because this is going alone, but making sure that you're careful about your next step uh, before you uh, make that step. Uh, really studying the landscape and uh, being thoughtful about moving forward. So it looks like if that were the case, there would be, you know, it would be a careful decision. The second one up for that is the King of Pentacles. The King of Pentacles is, of course, Pentacles is value, money, but this king is very pensive. Look at his face. He's very studious in this regard. You know, this is making me think this might be a possibility. And then the last card is the Knave of Wands. So this would be like the Page of Wands. And of course, Wands are actions, plans, forward movement. The Page would be the very least, um, you know, powerful of, of the uh, Royal Court. Interesting. So, given the uh, question of my topic, it's saying this would be a thoughtful decision. The King has a lot of value that he's considering very carefully or the potential king, I guess, but this is the king of, of pentacles, because it would reduce him to just a page after, after to deal with, uh, able to deal with actions, 
Okay, so maybe he has other things that he would like to do that the monarchy wouldn't allow him to do. Interesting, very interesting. So this is telling me that this is not uh, outside of the realm of possibilities, okay? That this could happen. The next in line, uh, if, uh, if everyone, all the kids uh, survive to that point, which would be uh, George, Charlotte, and Louis, uh, is that uh, Charlotte would be the one to pick up the crown. And you'd have a Queen Charlotte. So I want to think about age at this point. So let's say William is uh, 40. I think he's probably 42 or 3. But let's uh, do something quickly here. Let's say uh, William is, oh, I've got to cover my uh, code. Let's say that William, uh, at the age of, let's say he takes the crown at 45, which may be off, but I think it's going to be close. And let's say he's on the crown at uh, 55, 65, 75. Let's say he's on the crown for 30 years. Okay, that puts him at 75. Now, how old is uh, George right now? Let's do a search. Let's say age, age, prince. G-E-O-R-G-E, -E, age, prince, George, and Charlotte. Okay, so just to get a notepad here. Okay, George right now is 11 and Charlotte is nine. Okay. George is 11 and Charlotte is 9. In um, 30 years, he'll be 41. And in 30 years, she'll be 39. Interesting. So that gives us an idea of where they are in their life. At age 41, George uh, will have his life partner, whether uh, it's uh, a princess, a queen, could be another prince. Uh, so what would happen if George says, nah, I don't want to do it. And then Charlotte just is the next one to pick up, uh, the, the, you know, pick up the throne, so to speak. 41 and 39. Okay. So we're going to do six cards to see what would happen if George says no. Six cards. One. Two, three, four, five, six. What would happen if George says no? Count me out. Okay, so, oh, death. So end of a cycle. That's interesting that that would come up. It would be the end, certainly, of a cycle. This is kind of leaning into the idea that this could happen signifier card. The challenge to, to that end of a cycle, to George saying no, the challenge to that is, uh, oh, being tied to lesser intention. So, there's something that would be part of his life that would lead him to make that decision. The basis of all this, then, is the Knight of Swords. So, truth, justice, rules, and law. The fighter for truth, justice, rules, and law. It looks like this could be a decision that he would make in, uh, in, in defense of uh, fighting for some sort of a truth, some sort of a justice. The past at this time in the future for George, if he would decide to do this, is the Ace of uh, Swords, which is, um, it makes sense. So in the past of George in the future, in 30 years, he will have become a fighter for truth, justice, rules, and law. Uh, a champion, I should say, of true truth, just as words, the rules and law, which uh, ties in with him being the fighter for that. And in the sky of this is the uh, Knight of Cups, the Knight of Cups. And so he's aiming for, at this point, some sort of a compassionate intervention. And then the final outcome for this is the Ace of Wands, uh, Actions, Plans, Forward, Movement, a big offer. And it's interesting that this reading is uh, bookmarked by two aces. So he'll be forging some sort of a future. Now let's ask the cards, is this going to happen? Will George refuse to be king? 
Bill George refused to be king. Will George refused to be king? We need four cards to finish and make this a full Celtic cross. I'm gonna take them one at a time. Um, the very uh, essence of that question is the three of pentacles. And uh, the, th the pentacles are value or worth. And the three of pentacles is really building something for public display. Ah, so there will be a valuable um, uh, showing here, maybe a lesson or a valuable reason for this happening at that time in 30 years. The uh, uh, environment that that will be in is a seven of pentacles. And this is um, not illusion and delusion. Uh, seven of Pentacles. My mind is going a mile a minute here. So for some reason, I'm not thinking of Seven of Pentacles. Growth, cult, vision, we're doing. Oh yeah, wondering if you've done enough. So the the environment that that is is worrying that you hadn't done enough. And it's interesting that this is a female person depicted in this card. So Seven of Pentacles. Have you done enough for your value? Okay. <coughs> Will he do that? It would be, if he did so far, it would be in the in the service of building something for public display. It would be, um, I think this would be Charlotte wondering if she's uh, up to it, which she wouldn't have a choice. And then the hopes and the fears for this would be, look at this, the King of Swords. So this is a great big truth, justice, rules, and law. And the hopes and the fears for this is uh, being in charge of that. truth. So if he did this, it would be in the pursuit of those values, truth, justice, rules, and law. But the likely outcome, will he do it? Will he uh, not take the throne? King of Cups, no. He would not not take the throne. We've had too many kings come up in this for this to be the case. It looks like it might be a consideration, but no. He would compassionately take that throne and continue on. And it's uh, as uh, the king, the monarch of the crown at that point. So quick card draw and I uh, hope you liked it. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on a minute. So these cards are terrific. This is the Klimt Tarot. And some of you may uh, recognize this kind of gold uh, foil, gold embossed uh, artwork that is um, that Gustav Klimt is famous for. These are by Los Carabillo, and uh, these cards are really amazing. They give you a perfect uh, example of some of his works that uh, really uh, made him uh, so famous. Um, the cards uh, are amazing. I'll show you in a second. The instruction booklet isn't really much. Um, it's just a, a, some good information about Klimt, really, several pages on him. And then uh, some typical descriptions for the cards and uh, with reverse meanings written in italics. And it's in several different languages. So that's useful to lots of folks, I suppose. The containers, nothing to speak of, except that it does have beautiful examples of his art all the way around. And the cards are typical cards. I mean, they're easy to use. They're a shape that you're, you're familiar with, and they're a card stock that works pretty well. But uh, the real uh, star of the show here uh, uh, are the cards themselves. And they do come with little um, uh, suggestions up here as to what the cards are in, in four different languages. So like, these are ones. Uh, so you start to see them now, and you can see the gold foil in there and how beautifully uh, everything is depicted and they're just a real joy to use and they just uh, uh, reinforce uh, Klimt's uh, uh, use of nude figures, people in everyday uh, poses and everyday uh, shapes so uh, which wasn't very typical at the time. You wouldn't often find uh, cards or, or not cards, I'm sorry, but paintings that were so um, abrupt in showing how people actually look and women in uh, various uh, <laughs> positions of self-pleasure or with other women. So the cards are interesting. And they're and uh, if you go to Austria, you will just be inundated by uh, examples of Klimt's art there. So I love using these cards. We'll see how they work.